person. It just, it's, it's not even, it's... Concerned, started very young uh, in New York City. As many of you know from the uh, statements, he was born in New York City in 1923. His parents came from Barbados and Puerto Rico. Uh, his father worked for a company that provided uh, commercial supplies, art supplies, and he would sometimes take Abel's artwork to some of his uh, customers and say, "Take a look at this work." And, and they would come back, with, you know, come back with all these wonderful things to say to Abel, encouraging him uh, along the way. Uh, then he went to Pratt, studied at Pratt for a short period of time before being drafted into the Second World War. And he was stationed in France. And it was France that he fell in love with. And he went back to France on the GI Bill in 1946 in order to study at the École des Beaux-Arts and several other institutions there. Uh, he was joined later on, of course, by people like Herb Gentry uh, and also Ellsworth Kelly, who many of you know, who's also a friend of his in those Paris years. Uh, Avel uh, continued to develop his style and spent many years in Paris before coming back to the United States in the mid-50s. Uh, and it's at that point where he lived in Greenwich Village and uh, where he began to interact with the, uh, with the art scene there. Uh, I got to know Abel in the 70s, because I knew him as a family member. In fact, the first time I met Abel that I can remember meeting him was in 1957, when I was rather young. And uh, Abel uh, uh, would always come to birthday parties, family gatherings, and so forth. So he was very close to all of us. Uh, he also was very supportive of me as a visual artist. And so uh, he, in fact, purchased one of my pieces. Uh, we went to an, an exhibit of uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Avel was open to many different styles of art. And I created a painting that was an homage to Jean-Michel, and he purchased it. Uh, and so that was really another affirmation, you know, in terms of uh, coming from someone so talented and so esteemed by many people. Unfortunately, Avel did not, um, uh, in the later years, really promote himself and put himself out there. He became somewhat reclusive. And so a lot of people then, you know, once you're off the, in the New York scene, when you're off that radar for a period of time, you know, people kind of move on. But among his peers, they recognize his talent. Uh, and you can see his work here, what a master he was of color and form. And none of these pieces that you see here, by the way, were created uh, with a particular idea in mind. When he would create, he would let the work unfold and as it spoke to him. And he would move from one stage to the other. Uh, and so the subconscious was very important to him. You know, relying on, on sometimes making a little gesture or a mark. For example, in some of these pieces, uh, like the sea mirage over here, you can see that there are little orbs of light. And I asked him, how did you create those little effects? They're absolutely mesmerizing. And so uh, he, we were in the studio downstairs in, in my uh, home at the time, and he took his thumb and he put it in the gouache, and then he pressed it on the surface. And that's how he created it. Little things like that, gestures, accidental things. He would tell me, take sometimes a stick, right? Just a stick and dip it in some ink and draw with that so that you have less control, right? So that little techniques like this is what he shared. He was a, a, a person who was esteemed as a teacher. His students loved him, as George Nama, one of his colleagues at the National Academy, uh, once told me. Uh, and uh, he always carried himself in a very elegant and very dignified manner. And so Avel, I'm, I'm so pleased that we have another opportunity here uh, because of uh, again, Bill Burgess and Bob Kuyper for a larger public to become more aware, a reintroduction, if you will, of Avel uh, 
And so I thank you so much for taking the time to be here and listen to some of the few words that I have to say about this master, visionary master of art. Thank you so much. Any, any, any questions at all uh, about the artist or his work? Yes. What might a collective, or maybe you, write a book about Mr. Denight's work? Because it's really critical that people understand his legacy and his impact on visual art. I think the question, uh, if I understand correctly, is that there should be a book written about La Belle. And we have a number of people, uh, there were several people here, unfortunately they had to leave a little early, uh, who knew Avel personally. I've received their contact information and I'm going to be having conversations with them so that I can get more information about their experiences, about the person, and put this book together. Uh, I do, uh, in the 2001 retrospective catalog, I wrote an essay, it's a seven page essay about the artist and his life. That was a first step in that direction. But there will be more and you can look, be assured of looking for a book as well as a documentary, a documentary film about oh. Alvel and his life. Yes. Really the next Thank generation. you. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you for the question. Uh, I wanted to make sure that we gave a, a, a cross section of his work. Like the work over here of Mirage, this one is uh, starting in 1967. And the, the last work, which is the work here in the middle, uh, that was done in 1994. He died in 1995. So it shows a kind of cross-section from 1967 uh, through 1994. And the two works on the opposite of the vertical piece in the middle, those particular works were done in the 80s. So you get a sense of what he was doing in the 80s. And the last work here on the, on the end is just is between the 80s and the 90s, at the, at, the, at the very beginning of the 90s. So it gives a, a cross-section of his work. The other thing that, that's interesting, and this is why Bob uh, uh, said that it would be good to exhibit him here at Berkeley College, is that as an African-American artist, um, you know, when you look at the work, some, in some respects, you can, if the work, the work depicts certain aspects of, 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 of the African diaspora, but in, in other respects, he's really an American artist because he, he's, he's an, he has accumulated all of the influences of art throughout the ages, and it's reflected here in the work in terms of the stylistic and formalistic things that Steve was, was indicating. The other thing is, is that his technique, there's no doubt about the fact is that he was an excellent artist in terms of execution. So the execution of the, of the work is, is exquisite, in my view. And uh, then the, the use of color and the use of, and, and, and particularly the pastel medium. A lot of this is done in pastel, so that's very, very difficult. It's, it's, it's like with crayon, but at the same time, it's softer than crayon. So, you know, the, 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 uh, the linear movements, the vertical movements, all of that, using the, that, those kind of, that, that type of color medium is very difficult. So, um, as an artist, I think that he uh, ex exemplifies what I consider, what America has contributed to the progression of art. One other thing, too, is the fact is that he spent some time not only in Paris, as, as, as um, Steve mentioned, but also in the Soviet Union, traveled with, uh, through the State Department and, and, and taught there, as well as taught here at the Art Students League. So he has a lot of disciples of this style of, of, of work uh, uh, um, uh, existing and furthering that in, 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 in terms of their work here alive today. In fact, I, I, before I say a few more things about the work, I, I wanted to also introduce uh, Marianne Rose Gentry, who was uh, married to her, her Gentry, a very famous who spent time in Paris well, with uh, Beth, that's right, in the 1940s. So I'm so, so pleased to, to see you here. And her was a wonderful artist in his own life, as, as you are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I wanted to mention, just to pick up on what Bill was mentioning, uh, this piece that you see here, uh, Far City, The Crossing, um, now looking at it, we might not know, well, what Far City, The Crossing, what does, what does that evoke? Why is this figure mysteriously walking across the, uh, the environment here? 
Abel, in 1961, was hired by the State Department to travel to the then former Soviet Union, or the former Soviet Union, and he traveled to Central Asia, Bukhara, Samarkand, and it's there that he was exposed to uh, Islamic culture, uh, people wearing turbans and robes and so forth. And somebody at the time had asked him, uh, this was in 1961, well, this, the civil rights era is going on there and, and the freedom riders, and how is that reflected in your work? And he said, well, listen, I'm, I'm an artist, you know, and this is, this is what I do. And, but that, that thought stayed in his mind. How would he find a way? And it turned out that traveling to Central Asia opened up in his mind the experience of North Africa and then East Africa. And so therefore you begin to see in the 70s and 80s images that fuse the Western classical myth mythological figures together with African subject matter. So it's really a perfect blending of many different cultural aspects reflected in his work. Uh, he often talked about Eugene Delacroix, Raphael, the Renaissance artist. In fact, in some of these works here, you can see, for example, The Dying Slave by Michelangelo, or uh, The uh, Creation, with another Michelangelo piece here, an African man from West Africa, probably uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Maule. Uh, bringing all of these things together, in fact, I saw him working on this, and he told me this was a very important piece. Right? And this piece here, 1994, probably his last piece before he passed. And it's as though he is passing through, going to the beyond. The pyramid, which is seen in a number of his pieces, represented an ideal for him. And that's something that he was always striving toward that ideal, but it always remained elusive. So you see varying layers of transparency, you know, like a mirage, you know, something that's there and you keep reaching for it. And that spurred him on. And he had a great deal of confidence and, and uh, not only in his technique, but in being who he was. And Paris helped to free him up, as it did for many individuals, in terms of finding their own voice and their own way through life. Perfect does, which requires a person at the end of their, at the, end of their last year in college, they can do an internship in a business in New York City and get a sense of what it is it took to, to have a work experience before you go on to either further education or a job. Uh, and it also helps them to get a job. So, uh, intern who has worked with me on this and worked with Bob, Bob and, and, and Melvin hung the show. Uh, basically, uh, it was uh, Melvin Fernandez, he's a, a senior in accounting and, uh, and from this uh, he gets a grade in evaluation and uh, so it's, it's added to his experience beyond just the, the numbers of accounting. He has uh, another experience in terms of uh, his college education. That's one of the good things about Berkeley College, that they allow that for the students. Well, I remind you all to make sure you sign the log so that we know all the advice over there. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.